Let's uh, just kind of wade through this stuff. There's a couple of things on here, but the one assault was a domestic. The burglary, all three of those were storage units that were entered. Uh, disorderlies, we had some warrants, uh, trespassing, one of them involved juveniles. The embezzlement, there's nothing there. It was a report created in error. Family disputes had some no contact violations. The fraud, some of those are shopliftings. It did have a couple of scams that came in. Uh, one of them was to a house and the other was to a business and they were basically both the same type of thing. They had received a phone call from somebody claiming to be with XL Energy and so that they were passed on their payments and if they they basically needed to pay money immediately within the next 30 minutes or so or their power was going to be shut off. So in both of these cases, uh, the people unfortunately went and paid money, but it was a little bit different than what we've seen before. They used some uh, Bitcoin kiosk and so they're able to purchase it through there and then obviously um, send the notification to the, the scammers. And it was after, uh, I think in both cases, it was the next day that both victims ended up calling XL Energy and found out that it was a scam. So this is a, a little new wrinkle uh, from what we've seen before, at least as far as in terms of the payment. But the end result is the same, is that we want people, if they get a phone call from a, a utility company or somebody claiming to be with the government or whoever, uh, especially if they're said that they are owed money and need to pay right away, get some contact information, get the information from that person, hang up, and then do your own independent research. Call an 800 number for Excel. Don't rely on the numbers that uh, these people on the phone would call or give you because uh, it's quite possible maybe just rerouted to a different scammer. So use some, uh, you know, your own independent resources basically and, and confirm. Um, you know, call the people, find out if there's missing payments, if power is going to be shut off in the next 30 minutes, which seems a little uh, odd at that. And then um, we also had another person, this kind of falls in line with this, we haven't seen a whole lot of these uh, types, but this person had received a letter, and it looked to be an official letter from the Ohio Department of Job and Family Services, and it was some tax information. Uh, looked like a tax form, had this person's name, a lot of personal information on it, and there was a thing that if there was anything wrong uh, to go to a particular website, and she said it was a .gov website and thought it was legitimate, and she went to that website, typed it into her computer, and it took her to a different site, which was not a government website. So in that case, she recognized that it was a scam, didn't uh, give any kind of personal information or any kind of money, but uh, there are a lot of different variations of scams out there. This is the time of year when we're going to start seeing more tax type scams. So people just really need to be careful, uh, do some checking on their own, and, and don't give out any money uh, over the phone. Don't be buying uh, credit cards or reloadable gift cards. Um, certainly not any kind of Bitcoin either. So there's a lot of scammers out there and unfortunately they're very successful at what they do and, and we just want to p see people keep their money and, and not be giving it away. Uh, question about that Cliff? Mm -hmm. How uh, active is like local police involvement in something like that? I mean because you can't really investigate it right. like, in, with this capacity so like what kind of a role does local police play in that? It, it Well it kind of depends on the scam. Um, there's a lot of different variations of the scam, so our role in that really kind of depends. Most of the scammers are not in the United States. They're not even. They're not obviously in South Dakota. Um, if they're overseas, there's really not a whole lot that can be done with that. We have fraud detectives that work closely with the Secret Service and FBI, and so if there's information that could be used, or we learn that they are in somewhere else in the United States then we'll work with those federal agencies and uh, you know, share the information and, and hopefully try to resolve this. But it's, it, there's not a lot. Um, it, there's not a whole lot of times when we're successful at finding the scammers and that's what makes it frustrating because we know the, they're getting away with people's money. Uh, the larcenies, some more shoplifting's in there. 
uh, some other lost property, nothing real big from any of that. Uh, nothing big from the narcotics, just our normal marijuana and meth. The rape, that was a report. Uh, one of the sex offenses was a report. Another one that was, uh, we had a guy that was arrested for groping a woman. He ended up grabbing her rear end, um, just arrested for the sexual contact. Uh, nothing big out of the simple assaults and no vandalisms. Uh, the one other thing I was going to mention, we made another arrest with that in connection with that ATM theft. Uh, the person was arrested yesterday afternoon. His last name is Hubers, H-U-B-E-R-S. First is Brockton, B-R-O-C-K-T-O-N. Middle is Wade, W-A-D-E, and he's 45 from Sioux Falls. He was charged with grand theft and possession of stolen property. Uh, there was some other warrants that he had out, so he was arrested on those warrants as well. Uh, Mr. Hubers, he owned the house where the ATM was located, and that was on South Holbrook Avenue. And that's all I have, unless you guys have anything else. Okay, thanks.